Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome back to more of the Mario Party Top 100 playthrough. Uh, last time we started Minigame Island, we completed the first world, and now we're moving on to World 2. Here we are in World 2. Feel that sea breeze on your face. Sounds good to me. Uh, so first off, we're going to get some coins here. Get 30 coins, that's always a good number to get. And we're going to move on to our next game, which is Nightlight Fright from Mario Party 5. Remember this game always being, like, kind of scary in its own right, but, uh... You know, I, I can definitely understand this game being brought back in this compilation. Uh, let Chain Chomp get as close as you can before you turn around. Uh, so you just press A to stop the Chain Chomp. So, it's basically get the Chain Chomp as close to you as possible without him getting you. And honestly, this can be kind of tricky, too, not going to lie. And thankfully, I was able to win because the others just let him get a bit too close. So give us an extra life and let us move on to the next game. Uh, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of that game, but I can understand why they included it. So I don't really have too much of a problem with that. Uh, so next up we have Three Throw uh, from Mario Party 4. One of my favorite games from Mario Party 4. So I definitely appreciate it that they brought it back. So here we have time your jump shots to make a basket. And you press A to jump and then you press A again to shoot. Uh, the top and bottom baskets will give you one point, while the middle baskets will give you two points. So it's basically like, let's, uh, let's see how many points we can get. Now, if you've played uh, the Mario Party 4 variant, um, it honestly feels pretty similar. Uh, the only difference is you only have one button to press as opposed to two different buttons. So, in that right, I guess it does make this game easier. But uh, still, I mean, this game was pretty easy even in the original game, so... There's not really a whole lot to say about it, if I'm being honest. Um, it's a fun game, though. Like I said, it's probably my uh, one of my favorite games in Mario Party 4. So I definitely understand why they brought it back. Okay, so what do we have next on the agenda? Next up, we have Hotel Goomba from Mario Party 5. Uh, this is a really awesome game in Mario Party 5, I'm not going to lie. Um, let me go ahead and um, tap another amiibo. I did bring my Boo amiibo here as well. Only 10 coins, though. Still, though, it's a 10-coin bonus. Can't complain too much. Uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and do this game. Okay, so you move Goombas to reach the exit. You uh, just move around the control stick, you press B to push a Goomba, and you press the X button to reset if you made a mistake. So, that's basically what this is. This is just kind of a uh, small mini puzzle game. A puzzle slash escape game. And honestly, again, it's really cool. Like, this is a really good game from Mario Party 5. I'm glad they brought it back. And it's definitely, it's definitely a good game to bring back. It's a game I could honestly consider being in the quote-unquote top 100. Why, okay, I was like, why was I not pushing anything right there? Well, either way, we beat the game. Actually beat the game before anyone else reached the frickin' final floor. <laughs> Even with that control malfunction, I still managed to do it. Ah, but yeah, this was a good game. Probably one of the best games in this compilation, honestly, so... Definitely a solid choice to bring back. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. We have Mario Speedwagons from Mario Party 4. So, shift gears to accelerate and race to the goal. You press the A button to accelerate, and then you press the R button to shift gears. 
Uh, you need to be careful, though, because you need to shift gears at the right point. I actually got second place right there. I think it's because I kind of uh, blew out my engine at the very beginning. So that didn't really help. But, uh... Again, you don't need to come in last... Like, you don't need to come in first place necessarily. You just need to not come in last place. I do want to try that again, though. Because reasons. But first... Bowser... <laughs> Took you long enough. Ready to get stomped out of minigame? Not quite yet, but we will be in a little bit here. Uh, I do want to go back to this and try this again, though, because I, I have a feeling I can do this. I think I just, again, blowing out my engine at the very beginning didn't help. What the hell happened there? I got third that time, but... I don't know how I keep blowing my engine out like that. Maybe I, maybe it's just like I'm not pressing the... A button at the right time. I, I've always been... Like, even in the original Mario Party 4, I've always been at least kind of confused with... Like, the exact timing of where you need to be on the start of... Yeah, well, I won that time, but I feel like I also made a mistake and shifted gears too early on one of the other ones, so... I don't know. I don't know. Like, I, I'm pretty neutral when it comes to Mario Speedwagons. I don't think it's a bad game, but I wouldn't say it's, like, an amazing game either. But, um... I don't know. I think there are better games from Mario Party 4 they could have brought. Okay, well, so let's go ahead and talk to Bowser here. We're going to be playing a Bowser game now. Uh, Dizzy Rotisserie, which I believe is Mario Party 6? Yeah, Mario Party 6. Uh, so this is a Bowser minigame, which, uh, if you remember the way Bowser minigames worked in Mario Party 6 and 7, or really just any of the GameCube games, it's basically survive or you're losing a bunch of coins or losing a bunch of something. So, uh, yeah, you definitely need to perform well in these. Uh, ready to get stomped on in a minigame? I don't think so. But yeah, Dizzy Rotisserie. So you gotta head to the exit, you gotta move with the control stick, but the control stick uh, movement is kind of finicky because you're dizzy. So you have to kind of figure out the way the controls work to get out of here. Thankfully it's not too hard though. Wow, I'm like way ahead of everybody else. <laughs> and the funny thing is, I don't think you necessarily like, like... Like I think even if you're the last one through, you'll still get full credit for this. I think this game is more about just survive, don't die. <laughs> that is pretty much what that is. So yeah, there we go. We beat uh, that game, and now we can move on to the next one. Yes. You call this fun? <laughs> you haven't seen the last of me or my mini games. Next time, I'll play for keeps. Yeah, you do that. Okay, so here we have Shy Guy Says. Uh, this is from... Well, technically it's from Mario Party 1 and Mario Party 2, uh, but they are using the Mario Party 1 variant instead. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, but yeah, Dizzy Rotisserie, I think that's a fine minigame to pick for a Bowser minigame. Um, there will be a couple of other Bowser minigames we'll see as well, but I'll talk about those when it's relevant. Um, so yeah, uh, Shy Guy says, raise the same flag that the Shy Guy raises. Um, you have to either raise the red flag with the L button or raise the white flag with the R button. Which I find kind of weird that the uh, red flag is on the left when, you know, red, right, R, but, you know, it is what it is. 
Uh, the one thing I will warn you, though, is this game does play a little differently than what it does to the original game. So, whenever you see, um, he's not going to raise two flags at once. So, keep that in mind when you're playing this. Because that admittedly was something that threw me off the first time I played this version, was that I was expecting that to happen when really he handles... Like, yeah, see, like right there, I did it again. Ugh. Because, again, I'm just so used to, uh, you know, the fake-outs being slightly different in this when um, they're, you know, much different in this game. It's like you literally have to wait until, like... A flag is securely up in the air, is basically what you need to do. Yeah. I'm gonna try this again. I did it again! Ugh! <laughs> uh, hold on, I'm just going to click the map because... Because, <laughs> yeah, at least, like, with the original game, like, if he raised up two flags, like, I feel like you at least feel like you won't press both buttons. You'll wait till one's at least up. But here, it's just... The fact that it works differently it just throws me off every single time. Okay, just wait this time. It's like I'm worried about being too slow when you don't need to be. When you do not need to worry about being too slow. No! I, I, and see, I was too slow that time, but I get first, so that's all that matters. <laughs> okay. We can move on. But yeah, honestly, like, I, I'm not really a huge fan of how they changed that. Like, I mean, it's just because I'm used to the way it used to be, that's why. And maybe that's not a good enough reason to not like something, but it just really throws me off, and it makes it less fun as a result. Uh, so here we actually have a choice of where we can go. We have two different games we can go to. We have Peer Pressure, and we have Rocky Road. Um, let's go ahead and get the uh, harder path out of the way first, because uh, Peer Pressure, um, this is, I believe, a Mario Party 9 minigame yet again. But um, I also feel like this is also kind of a luck-based minigame, too. So we're going to go ahead and take this route first, just to, just to get it out of the way. Reel in the fishing pole that looks like it has a cheap sheep. So you just uh, move and then you press A to reel in a pole. And that's basically what this is. But yeah, it, it is pretty much luck based, I believe. Or I don't know. Like, essentially you want to wait for like a certain fishing pole to like be shaking in a certain way, I guess. But... I guess any fishing pole that looks like that is a cheap, cheap one. I, I guess the right mindset is, like... I'm not sure if it's luck-based or not, but if it's not luck-based, I don't know the what determines which one has a cheap cheap or not. Because, yeah, like, I... I don't know. But yeah, that's kind of the annoying thing, is if you want to get, um, um, 300 mini-stars, you do essentially have to play these luck-based ones, or ones that are kind of luck-based over and over again until you get like first place which is kind of annoying 
And trust me, there will be other games uh, of that nature later on. I'm going to go ahead and give it another shot, though. It was kind of nice that someone, like, picked a bad one from the very beginning, which was kind of nice, because it meant that I wouldn't lose at the very least. But... Okay, everybody just fail this game right now. That's all that has to happen. Everyone just has to fail, like, immediately, and we're good. I think this is a bad one. Okay. We got it. We got it. But yeah, you guys you guys have seen my Mario Party playthroughs. You know how I feel about luck-based minigames. I don't like them. I don't think they should be included in a top 100 compilation. That's just me. The one exception I'd make is like a popular one, like Bowser's Big Blast. But even then, like... I don't know. I'm just not a fan of them. Bombs away from Mario Party 1 and Mario Party 2, but I think this is once again the Mario Party 1 variant because um, I don't think they have like the extra like Bowser bomb or anything else. Survive until the end. Is it just me or does this platform seem smaller than it is in Mario Party 1 and 2? Like I know this is on a 3DS console or handheld, whatever, but like still. I feel like this is such a small platform. And I win. Was I against all three, like, female characters? I just now realized. <laughs> uh... Well, either way, we won. Now that we got that out of the way, we're going to go back and uh, check out the other games. We'll be back to that other one. Uh, so next up we have Rocky Road. I believe this is from Mario Party 6. It's a 2 versus 2 game. I want to say this is the first 2 versus 2 game we've played, so we actually get to work with Yoshi now. Um, so yeah, for this one, uh, break down the boulders to get back on the road. You can move around. You press A to jump. You press B to punch. And when you're jumping, if you press B, you can do a kick, which kicks will do a little extra damage to the boulder. So that's basically what we have here. It's just... Sorry, Yoshi, I didn't mean to hit you right there. I was trying to help you out with that rock. may not seem like it, but I definitely was. Um, but yeah, as far as um, um, the last game, Bombs Away, I think that's a pretty classic game. Um, and, you know, it was the first, like, kind of survive type of game in Mario Party. So I feel like that was a, you know, it's a decent one to bring back. Uh, this one, though, I think this was a great game to bring back. It's a very classic uh, two versus two game. Maybe not the most classic, but still, it's fun. And it requires a good bit of teamwork as well, which I always appreciate. So yeah, I do think this was a good game to bring back. Definitely one of the best uh, two versus two games in Mario Party 6, so definitely a nice one. So there we go, Rocky Road has been cleared. Now let's all go eat some ice cream to celebrate. <laughs> okay, so next up we have Crank to Rank. Uh, I believe this is a Mario Party 8 minigame, one of the very few uh, Mario Party 8 minigames that are actually in this game. Uh, so this is uh, going to be uh, one of very few. So for this game you have to raise the flag quickly 
and you use the stylus to do so and you have to basically just spin the wheel on the bottom screen with your stylus or pencil or whatever okay maybe not pencil but you know any kind of like stylus like device you could also use your like fingers I guess but I feel like uh, you won't get like accurate movement if you do that And there we go. So much like uh, a lot of the uh, Wiimote waggling games in Mario Party 8, it's a very quick game. If it takes longer than 10 seconds, something terribly wrong must have happened to your touchscreen. But um, I, I guess of all the kind of Wiimote waggling games in Mario Party 8, that's probably like the best one to bring back. I feel like it's at least, uh, you know, it's simple enough, and it's really not too bad to play, I guess, but that's really all I gotta say about it. It's it's a pretty unremarkable game from Mario Party 8, because there's just so many that are like that, where you just, like, shake the Wiimote really fast to win. Uh, but let's move on to another game. We have The Great Deflate uh, from Mario Party 4, another classic 2 versus 2 game, and this one is actually pretty fun. And uh, I'm glad this one actually appeared too, so. Basically, you work together with your partner to flatten this uh, thwomp um, cushion. And if you manage to uh, ground pound at the same time, you'll actually knock it down a bit uh, more. And the higher you jump, uh, the higher or the higher your ground pound, the more um, work you'll put on it as well. But yeah, pretty good uh, 2 versus 2 game to include. And another good one from Mario Party 4. Okay, so... World 2-1 clear. So we're done with uh, at least half of World 2. Hey, you did it. Now we can pass. And let's, uh, let's go ahead and keep going. We have a couple of minutes we can keep going with. So we'll go ahead and play for a little bit longer. So next we have kind of a... I guess, desert rock-like area. And the next game we have is another one from Mario Party 4. It is the battle game, Paths of Peril. Stay on the course and head for the goal. So, um, in Mario Party 4, like, I'm not a huge fan of this game. Because that happens to me a lot, but, uh, I do think it's a good game. It is a good game. You just have to be really, really focused on your movement and how you're moving through this. And honestly, I think it's kind of nice that in this variation, like, um, as you're moving through the course, like, in the original, like, it was based on number of screens. And here, it's like, it's like one giant fluid screen, which is kind of cool. It's kind of cool how they made it like that. But yeah, I think it's a good game. It's a good inclusion. And, um... I, I do think it honestly feels a little better in this game. Maybe it's just like the moving animations feel more fluid because it's on a system, like a more advanced system, even if it is a handheld, so that might help, but I don't know. Um, so we went uh, the top path last time. Let's go the bottom path this time. Where we have the final countdown. Um, I actually want to say this is Mario Party 7. Let me check my list. Uh, yeah, Mario Party 7. So we'll do this really quick. I guess we'll just finish these two games and after that we might end the video. So this is another survival game. Uh, knock off your rivals and watch for open panels at zero. So you move, you jump, you punch, you can do your air kick as well. So yeah, just uh, just survive. <laughs> it's kind of funny because like Luigi like went across the platform that was ready to hit zero, but he somehow survived, but then I just kicked him into an open spot, which is even funnier. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's that one. 
the final countdown. Um, I'd say it's a decent inclusion. It's it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty cool take on the uh, survival type of mini game here. Uh, so next up we have a, a very familiar game. This is, is this the first Mario Party three game we've played in this playthrough. I want to say it is. I'm actually gonna look that up really quick. Uh, Wow, this is actually the first Mario Party 3 game we are playing. Um, but yeah, we have The Beat Goes On. Uh, a game that I used to call The Beat Drags On in one of my uh, previous Mario Party 3 playthroughs. Uh, so yeah, we have to uh, basically uh, bang along with the guide and then add your own button. It basically just continues on until all the players are eliminated. And you gotta, like, uh, memorize the beats, and then also keep the beat going. So, bah. Baba. Baba is you. Anyone play that game? It's a pretty cool game. Uh, but yeah, the one thing that kind of helps is that they definitely speed this up a bit. Um, baba. So yeah, the faster, slightly sped up speed of this is definitely nice. Ba-bob. ba ba ba, -ba. It doesn't sound as fun as, uh... Zabba, Baba, Dabba, Labba, whatever it was in the original. ba ba Okay, she missed it. So yeah, um, even though I'm not a huge fan of uh, The Beat Goes On, the original game, um, I do appreciate the faster speed of this. Still not one of my favorites, but uh, it is a very memorable game from Mario Party 3, and I can definitely see why it was included, so I'm not really too angry about that inclusion. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, properly stop here, so we're going to end um, at this point. Um, but next time, we'll continue on with the rest of World 2. Or World 2-2, two, two, and then we'll move on to World 3, I guess. So, this has been Slim Kirby. Thanks for watching, and I will uh, see you guys next time. Later, folks.